Natalie Portman can make even the most vague direction look good. All right, Natalie, now do generic sciencey stuff and look smart. The last 17 occurrences have been predictable to the Jane, second. You're an astrophysicist, not some storm chaser. I'm telling. Yeah, Jane, why wouldn't you call Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton? Oh, I made myself sad. We miss you, Bill Paxton. That was definitely the start driving before closing door Grand Theft Auto animation. That they were not alone in this universe. You know, since I created a bunch of hosts to do whatever with. The Frost Giants. Eh, could be worse. Last time we saw the Night King, he was and Ha! And you all thought I'd spoil Game of Thrones. The rest of you know what I'm talking about. Moving right along in this setup. Cold open attempted manslaughter on Thor, and then we jump into a song of ice and fire. I mean, a war of ice and fire. Also, some quick visual exposition on how Odin lost an eye. Clearly, we don't need lower carbon emissions. We just need some help from Odin. Hmm, was that like a brief fake out to the comic fans that know Asgard is golden? Crystals? What is this, the Fortress of Solitude? Or is this Mount Olympus, like under Asgard? I know Asgard isn't spherical like Earth, but someone with more Thor lore knowledge is gonna have to enlighten me. Absolutely stunning either way. Also, more Thor lore. Only one of you can ascend to the throne, but both of you were born to be kings. There's really no reason to be surprised when Loki tries to take over all the worlds. Mostly something we take for granted in this franchise at this point, but the costumes and helmets and all the expertly designed weapons are really impressive and blend with the mostly CGI environments amazingly. So, are we saying there are two gauntlets? Since Thanos has the other one? Table comeuppance. There's nothing you can do without defying father. No, 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 no. Thor may be strong of body, but you have to admire how Loki just played him like a three-year-old. Beautiful beardwin. And his hair ain't too shabby either. And who proved wrong all who scoffed at the idea that a young maiden could be one of the fiercest warriors this realm has ever known? I did. True, but I supported you. Helpfulness. They really didn't hold back on the gorgeous imagery, showing off Asgard every chance they got. 15 minutes in and Thor is prettier than most of the films in the MCU. And the background visuals are inspired. Like, their world seems to be on the cusp of touching different sections of outer space at any moment. I can't seem to escape Idris Elba. He's been in eight of the 94 movies I've done. I wonder if that means anything. He's always amazing. I just, I hate Charles Minor so much. Let me think about it. Never has an enemy slipped my watch until this day. And I'm not convinced they did anything extra to his booming voice. Ignorance for effect. If your return threatens the safety of Asgard, by Frost will remain closed. I mean, he manages to deliver these lines so monotone while still carrying weight and emotion. Thor gets into it a little more later, but I do love that while it's still beyond our understanding, the Bifrost seems very mechanical and scientific. I know, magic comes to the MCU eventually. But for now, just some smart tech. But the teleportation effects are beautiful. They're downright, well, magical. I knew I recognized him. It's the Lord Marshal from the Chronicles of Riddick. He really takes this super thin, one-note character and makes him work. I imagine that's why Branna is constantly getting so close to his face and why he's not CGI. Run back home, little princess. Damn. Knowing your brother. <laughs> Taunting roar. What? It's a legitimate battle tactic. I know he's like the god of mischief or trickery or whatever, but man, does he lean into it. Loki's no warrior, but he is a smarty pants. Red shirt cook cook combo all right, even though most of the Frost Giants are just sort of, meh, hammer fodder, the Beast has a presence that won't be denied. You can actually feel his weight on the ice. Yep, a little Thor's lightning is always good for a yep. Gravity isn't a theory I subscribe to, thank you very much. Oh snap, that's brutal. Some attention to detail with Odin's different armor for battle. Really, gold wouldn't be the best at protecting you. Even if it's just gold-plated, why scratch it up? They don't have the same elements as Earth, do they? I'm sticking to it. Saving your dumb kids and their friends. You are unworthy of these realms. Unworthy of your title! You're unworthy! Tough love. Hey! And narratively, they've done a great job at creating Thor's unlikable personality from the second he's on screen. I'll hunt the monsters down and slay them all. Risky and bold way to introduce us to our main protagonist as a self-important, war-loving, pompous brat. But it makes his growth and change by the end all the more satisfying. If he be worthy, he shall possess the power of Thor. Hammer whispering. But she tasered him. Yes, I did. Taking pride in your work. <laughs> Still really pushing that unlikableness. Where's Doctor Strange when you need him? Guess you're not the true king of England. Stick to writing, J. Michael Straczynski. Yeah, he's one of the guys who wrote the Thor comic. <laughs> Serves you right, Stan. Shouldn't you use that chain made of nth metal? I mean, adamantia. I mean, vibranium. Where are we? Chris Hemsworth workout routine. My ex. 
So technically, Comic Jane didn't originally know that Donald Blake was actually Thor in disguise, so that actually fits in continuity. Thus, why his photo ID matches? Odin's crazy power is alluded to in the retelling of Loki's adoption. Or I guess kidnapping? He must have cast a spell to keep Loki looking icier. That only fails if he comes into contact with ice giant stuff. No, you took me for a purpose. What was it? Tom Hiddleston can never get enough credit for his role. It would be a really hard scene to find that line between over the top emotion and not enough emotion for the gravity of the news that you're actually a frost giant. And it clearly has an effect on Odin as well, draining his power and forcing him into Odin sleep. Drink, I like it. I know, that's great, right? Another! <laughs> Politeness? Different cultures, you know. Normal human smiling. All the answers you seek will be yours once I reclaim your man. Meow meow? <laughs> What's meow meow? <laughs> Flirting. I knew the scientist, pioneer in gamma radiation. Shield showed up and um, he wasn't heard from again. It was weird though, I did see him again in New York, but he looked way less Fight Club and a lot more 13 going on 30. Father has fallen into the Odin sleep. Do you think Loki and Thor go into Odinson sleep occasionally? So, I'm about halfway through and goodness, there's a lot of Dutch tilt in this film, but here's a time it's used correctly as Loki declares he's king. You're king. So there's one. Think this covers frost giants? No, oh, I guess we care more about myths. I need a horse! <laughs> Optimism! We don't have horses, just dogs, cats, birds. They give me one of those large enough to ride. And indiscrimination. Good strange or bad strange. Or Dr. Strange? Like, like a Einstein Rosenbridge? More like a rainbow bridge. Some say it's the hardest to cross, and falling off the edge is far too easy when you're on a go-kart. Agent down, we've got a perimeter breach. It's like Thor doesn't even know who Sam Fisher or Solid Snake is. I guess presumed god powers make you not worry about that stuff. Okay, I did exactly what you told me not to. I'm sorry. Eh, honesty. Ha, like he'd even reach for the gun. Though, I guess Coulson did specifically request one. I need eyes up high with a gun. Or is this like the quickest, goofiest origin for Hawkeye? So I thought to myself, nah, feels like a bow kind of night. Will someone please just shoot Sitwell? We have previously established in Jack Reacher that final fights in the rain are a win. This isn't exactly a final fight, but I'll let it slide. Especially since it ends in a dropkick. Sort of expectations aversion with the swelling score. Even Cap budged it, Thor. You must really not be worthy. Well, Laufey and Loki may not use the correct nomenclature. As guardians. As guardians. But the book does. I'm talking about science, not magic. Well, magic's just science that we don't understand yet. You know, like my husband's lightsaber. He made my man some of the most highly trained professionals in the world look like a bunch of minimum wage mall cops. That's hurtful. Ha <laughs> ha, cool, Sid. Always with the direct That's honesty. Nice. Father is dead. Mother has forbidden. Your return. Jeez, Loki, don't hold any punches or anything. Did his pet wolf run away too? No Excalibur moment for you either, Loki. The father and I taught at university together. Yeah, one time I got this real troubled kid pawned off on me. Good at math, likes apples, you'd love him. So you're the one who showed us the way into Asgard. That was just a bit of fun, really. And you gotta give it up to Tommy Boy again. You kind of always know he's up to something, but he's so polite and coy. Now he turns on the sinister. I turned my gaze upon you in Jotunheim, but could neither see you nor hear you. Or perhaps someone has found a way to hide that which he does not wish me to see. And this is one of those details that screenwriters often just ignore, and then you'd have every Marvel subreddit blowing up about why Heimdall couldn't see him. Instead, they brought it up and worked it into the story. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. Tell that to Doctor Strange. Yeah, three strange jokes for Ragnarok. What? Shut up. Okay, I just found this quote from Idris Elba and it settles something for me. Thor has a hammer that flies to him when he clicks his fingers. That's okay, but the color of my skin is wrong? Just cast the best actor for the part. Idris Elba is always a win. Man, seven movies lacking that ranking. Hope he comes up again. I don't know, maybe in New Mexico people would be a little nervous, but most places they'd just say, hey, cosplayers, and then start gathering around them assuming a show was imminent. Got uh, Xena, Jackie Chan, and Robin Hood. Oh, that's terrible and racist. It's like my level of joke which isn't a compliment for a blockbuster movie. But I love that he ignores Ragnar Lothbrok there since this is the home of the Vikings. Ooh, the intensity of still moving the sword to Loki's throat as he's being frozen. In the land of escalating comic book confrontations where huge landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and the White House are targets for the scale of destruction, it's actually refreshing that it's just some podunk New Mexico town 7-Eleven getting blown up. Teamwork. I'll take your teamwork and raise you a T-1000 reverse my body move. 
If you're wondering how this port in Mexico town recovered after the horrible events of this film, fear not. They actually built an entire town just to destroy it. We must return to Asgard. You have to stop Loki. I have a plan. Such a great turning point for Thor. He's only ever used his power and might and hammer to win battles. He never had to try anything different, but now he uses his brain and recognizes the only way for him to win is to lose. But these people are innocent. Taking their lives will gain you nothing. So take mine. Self-sacrifice. And if you want to talk about a petulant child, Loki does the fake out, nah, it's fine, and then instead of a quick incineration death, backhands Thor. <laughs> That's pretty satisfying. <laughs> Phoenix down hammer. And for kind of a ho-hum lead up to this finale, I'll give them some spectacle points for this battle. So is this how you normally look? More or less. It's a good look. Compliments. Know this, son of Cole. <laughs> Cole, son. Thor, Odin's son. Ah, good stuff. You return the items you have taken from Jane. Stolen. Borrowed. Semantics. <laughs> yep. Also determination. Love. Bet you didn't think you'd be feeling sympathetic for some mean old frost giants in the end of the Thor movie, did ya? Loki, this is madness. Is it madness? Is it? Or is it Sparta? Loki v Thor fight ends up being more evenly matched and entertaining than expected. <laughs> Non-lethal restraint. Not exactly self-sacrifice, more like a personal sacrifice. Potentially giving up seeing Jane again to stop some, well, genocide. Odin to the rescue. Well, that's it. Loki's dead. Guess we'll never see him again. Someday, perhaps. I shall make you proud. You've already made me proud. Can't not win a sweet father-son moment of approval. And some spacey credits to keep us entertained while waiting for the stinger. I was thinking that taking me down here to kill me. <laughs> you never know what Fury might be up to. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Well, I guess that's worth a look. Ooh, this got me excited for the Avengers. Setting up the MacGuffin and the extent of the main villain's not yet explored power. Even after Thanos does it himself, I think Loki may go down as the best MCU villain. I think we were all pretty surprised by Thor when it wasn't terrible. The God of Thunder? After you showed us how grounded Iron Man was supposed to be? Sure, I'll buy a guy messing with gamma radiation and turning green, but Thor? Are you crazy? And then it was actually pretty great. And to say that the Thor movies are at the bottom of most people's MCU ranking is barely a slight. It's like being the worst piece of printed currency when your choices are a $100 bill, a $50 bill, and a $20 bill. It's still money. I still like money. I only bring it up because barring something really terrible, I have a feeling that Ragnarok is going to shoot to the top of a lot of fans' rankings. It's perfectly timed with this retro feel, it's at least partially adapting Planet Hulk to live action, and Thor's new haircut? What else could you ask for? I probably liked Thor in its sequel more than most, partially because my wife really enjoyed the movie in theaters, and what can I say? I'm easily swayed by her valuations. You heard it here, folks. The real genius optimist is the woman behind the man. Still, it might be fair to say this film holds up a little less than some of the others in the MCU. We're doomed. Dutch angles every few seconds didn't help anything. I can almost hear Brandon yelling at the cameraman. No, tilt, no, tilt it. Tilt it more. Angle it! Better. Thank you. It's one of those things you can't unsee once you see it, so sorry for that. But from a story standpoint, it's still a worthy addition to the MCU. Thor is pretty simply another straightforward hero's journey. Thor loses something of value to him, and on his quest to recover it, gains something much more valuable. It can feel a little overdone, but when done well, it's a story I don't think I'll ever stop appreciating. A man, god, alien, whatever, who has everything he could ever want. His only real trials have been in battle, and that shaped him into the arrogant, greedy child he is. It isn't until his power is stripped that he learns the value of life, relationships, and selflessness. His character arc is fairly uncomplicated, especially when contrasted with Loki the Schemer. Loki is equally as self-serving, but hasn't had everything handed to him in the same way that Thor has. Loki's always been one for mischief. So he learned to connive and trick to get his way. I really love Loki in this film. You genuinely don't know what he'll do next, or what he's already done. And he's mostly a sympathetic character who feels like he has no true family and just wants his father's approval and admiration. So the story was great, but you can't deny the CGI, especially the environments. Everything about Asgard is breathtakingly beautiful. Different color palettes are used to distinguish the three main locations from each other in an identifiable way. Asgard is bright and shiny, Jotunheim is dark, blue, and cold, and Earth is, well, pretty much Earth in the American Southwest. But it's deliberately the only place we feel at home, making Thor stand out as inhuman. And I've only been to the Southwest a handful of times, so don't tell me it was foreign to you Antarcticans. While I praised Wonder Woman for making a definitive statement about Greek gods in the DCEU, I also still appreciate the interpretation of Norse gods as aliens. What's the difference, really? Like Jane and Thor say. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. 
Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. Well, magic's just science that we don't understand yet. Asgardian or Icier level vulnerability, mortality, and strength are never really quantifiably established, and I like that air of mystery. The case could be easily made that Ares, Diana, Zeus, and the Amazons are also just alien beings with properties that we don't or can't comprehend as humans. I don't think that's what they're saying, but it doesn't bother me. Kind of like DS9's wormhole alien prophets. Whoa, easy with the Star Trek references there, champ. Moving along. Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston obviously carry this movie, the latter of which really, really impressed me. Loki has some of the best moments in the film. But the casting of Captain Kirk's dad for a minute paid off for sure. Natalie Portman is an amazing actress even when she's in bad movies. Unfortunately, she's not given a whole lot to do in this film. It's all sort of filler stuff. Her character is still set up pretty well, and even if there isn't a whole ton of relationship building between Thor and Jane, their chemistry is still pretty great. Maybe it's just because they're both so pretty. Stellan Skarsgård is another actor who just never disappoints and rounds out the cast really well. Rene Russo is way underused, but it seems like Kenneth Branagh was able to pull a bunch of actors in regardless of the roles they'd have. Although Anthony Hopkins may have lowered his standards a tad since this film. I've been hard on Branagh, and I need to say I think he's a fine and at times great director and actor. And I'm really looking forward to Murder on the Orient Express. Thor was a great intro for these characters, especially Loki being the first villain for the Avengers, and if you couldn't tell, I'm stoked for Ragnarok. Some good news and bad news for next week. Good news is next week is my anniversary, bad news is no time for a new video. But good news is that I'm going to re-edit and re-upload Kung Fu Panda in the short time I have, since it bizarrely got blocked after a year and a half. So it's a bad news sandwich, but that makes it sound bad. It's, it's just because the good news is the bread. It's, uh, it's a good news lasagna. Anyway, Kung Fu Panda will be back. Alright, I'm out. I'm sorry, my friend. What happened? We drank, we fought, he made his ancestors proud.